Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for watching. In today's video, I am joined by Mark from Epic Confections. Oh, hi, sorry, I was just having a little sip of my Santa's little helper flask. I'll put that away now. Hi everyone, how are you? Hi Charity. Hi. So Mark and I decided to collab and this week we're gonna be doing a gingerbread theme. Charity, how do you like your men? Ginger, how do you like your men, Mark? Any. So let's get right into it. Oh no. I'm starting off with one nine inch square cake that I've leveled and cut in half and I'm gonna be filling that with some vanilla Swiss meringue buttercream using my large offset spatula. I have my little gingerbread man template that I will link below and I'm going to start cutting that out with my ridiculously long knife. I'm keeping all of my scraps just the way they are because I know that my template is a little bit too big for my cake and I'm going to need to use those later. I've peeled away my template and then I'm going to cut the head about in half. And then after I arrange my scraps in place, I'm just gonna carry on cutting out the head. Of course, if your template is big enough for the cake they're using, you don't have to do this step. But if you ever are cutting out a template and you're like, oh my God, I don't have enough space, you can always make it work. My cake was just a smidge taller than I wanted to be, so I'm gonna shave about an inch off the top. Next, I'm grabbing my little knife here and I'm going around the entire cake because I want to round out all of the edges. Once I was happy with the shape, I'm adding more of my buttercream and then using my small offset spatula, I'm going to apply a thin layer all over my cake and this is just going to lock in all of those pesky little crumbs so they don't show up in my final ice. I'm putting that in the fridge to chill for about 25 minutes and then once you can touch your finger to the buttercream, it's ready for the final ice. While we're waiting, why don't we have a sneaky peek at what Mark's doing over on his channel. So this time I'm applying a thicker layer all the way around and I'm using my spatula to help me smooth that out as much as I can, but because this is a bit of a rounded cake now, I'm gonna use a piece of cardstock. You could also use a piece of acetate and this is just gonna allow you to kind of curve with the cake and really smooth it out. I put that back in the fridge to chill and now I'm gonna start on my fondant. I'm rolling out this brown shade on my cornstarch surface to about an eighth of an inch thick. With my fondant roller, I'm picking that up and then draping it over my chilled cake, working quickly with my hands just to get all the air pushed out from underneath that fondant. I'm going around the head and the arms and the legs, and to help me get into all the nook and crannies, I'm cutting off some of that excess and then rolling it into a ball and just dusting that with a little bit of cornstarch so it doesn't stick. And this is going to help me really press in to my fondant without leaving fingernail marks or anything like that. Once it was smoothed down with my X-Acto knife, I'm going around the cake and just cutting away that excess fondant. So at this point, this is what I had going on. You can see there is a little bit of cake showing through in between his legs, but I knew I was gonna be covering that, so I'm not stressed about it. I've rolled out some very vibrant green fondant and I'm draping that over his legs, just trying to get it in between there all the way down without it breaking. So focus on that area first, just gently coax it down. You can use your fondant tools if you need to. Once his pants were on there, I took some more of my scrap fondant and I'm just giving it a little bit of a smooth all around the rounded parts. And if I added any little indents with my fondant tools, I'm just buffing those out. 
I cut away the excess using my X-Acto knife. And then to cut a straight line where the top of his pants are going to end, I just used my fondant smoother as a guide and tried to get that as even as possible. Be careful here that you're not cutting all the way through down through that brown fondant. You just wanna cut through the green. Using strips of green fondant, I'm adding two cute little suspenders and just trying to space them out evenly on both sides. I'm starting off with one nine inch square cake that I've leveled and cut in half and I'm gonna be filling that with some vanilla Swiss spring buttercream using my large off. With a strip of black fondant, I'm draping that over the top of his pants and that's gonna be his belt. Gingerbread man template that I I've placed a long strip of white fondant over his arm, and then I'm gonna try to arrange that in kind of a wavy pattern. All of my fondant was sticking together really well, but if you need the extra security, you can just add a little bit of shortening or water. I have two balls of red fondant that I've made into this like teardroppy triangular shape, and I'm adding those at the top of each suspender so that they're covered. I marked in a couple lines using my fondant tool and then added this little button of red fondant into the middle. Using the back of a piping tip, I cut out two circles for his eyes and then a larger circle that I cut in half and that's gonna be his mouth. Next, I'm adding two white circles of fondant into each eye for the little catch lights. Using some light pink fondant, I'm adding two small ovals underneath each eye for his blush. With a circle of that pink fondant, I put it into the corner of his mouth and just trimmed away the excess for his tongue. I've rolled out some white fondant that I'm draping over the top of his head, kind of at a bit of an angle, and I'm gonna cut out a like drippy icing pattern with my X-Acto knife. I rolled out two long thin snakies of green and red fondant and then cut them into pieces, and I'm placing those just haphazardly all over the top of the head. I've got some silver dragees that I'm pushing in there as well. If they fall out like a couple of mine did, you can just add a little bit of edible glue or shortening to help hold them in place. I added three balls of fondant down the front of him and then using my fondant tools, I'm just creating little buttons. Using some darker green fondant, I just freehanded like holly leaves. They're definitely not perfect, but they did the job. And then three balls of white fondant for the berries that go in the middle. I cut out this tiny little square of white fondant and then cut the middle out of that for his belt buckle. And I'm brushing that with some gold luster dust. With some white food coloring gel on my fine tip paintbrush, I'm drawing some candy cane shapes on his suspenders, and then I mixed some of that white with a little bit of red food coloring for the stripes. I did not show myself drawing those on there, but I just drew on some stripes. Thank you so much for watching guys. Be sure to check out Mark's channel and his video. He is wonderful and hilarious. You will love him, so don't miss out on that. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Okay, one more time. All right, whenever you're ready, you, do, you no pressure. <laughs> James just had lots of pressure. Oh good, you can see my dirty garbage can out on my deck. <laughs> they just zoomed that in a smidge. <laughs>